everybody, welcome to J Stern Designs and welcome to Subscriber Q&A. This week I had planned on showing you guys how to draft or how to hack a raglan sleeve back into a set-in sleeve, but when I started playing with that I got a, it got to be a little bit much, like it's not I was having a hard time making it like super simple. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to draft a simple raglan sleeve from scratch. And in the process of doing that, I'm going to show you some things that can cause fitting issues depending on how it's drafted. Well, there's one fitting issue I want to talk about. And then also I'm going to show you what happens when you change the angle of the sleeve. And I'm going to explain all of that to you in a minute. Let me say hi to Camilla, welcome. Hi, Escape 10 Mom, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Mary, nice to see you. Um, so what we're gonna do is, I have I went to the printer this morning and I printed um, um, I printed some templates to, I mean, um, some mini pattern pieces to work with, but I printed them on 17 by 11 paper, so I have room to draft the sleeve off of the bodice, so I feel pretty professional today. Now, I might have mentioned to you guys, if you join my mailing list, because I'm trying to grow my mailing list, so I thought I would give away a set of mini pattern pieces, a PDF of that for free, if you sign up for the newsletter. So if you're not on my newsletter, you can... Um, join my newsletter and you will instantly get the free set of mini pattern pieces in a welcome email. If you're already in my email list, they came with the May newsletter. So the the temp the mini bodice I'm working with today is from that set. I just printed it on bigger paper. So if you want to follow along with me, you can. Sheila says, "Hi Jessica. This is w oh. This is way off, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. This is off topic. I hope it'll be interest to others as well. Um, Sheila, are you the one that asked me the original question about drafting the raglan sleeve from the regular sleeve? Because if, it, if you did, um, oh, let me see here. You mentioned the cutting board. Okay, wait a minute. All right, so... Um, if you had asked me that question, I'm backing up and I'm showing how to draft a raglan sleeve first because when I tried to come up with an easy way to back draft it from raglan to a set-in sleeve, I decided it was getting too complicated and I want to show this part first. Um, Sheila also wants to know the cutting board where I purchased it. Purchase it. That's great for rotary blades. You please, um, please provide the link. Okay, this is the... This cutting board is from the Big Mat Rotary Cutting Surface Company. This is an amazing cutting board. Um, I will put a link to, um, to them when I get done later today. It was called to my attention that my link to them does not work, so I need to fix that anyway. So I will contact them and find out what link they want me to use because the one I was using that they gave me is not working. But it is the best cutting mat, I think, on the market. So I will definitely get that link under this video later today. Um, hi, Karen. Welcome. Hi, Diane. Welcome. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to put my subscriber Q&A on my cal monthly calendar. So just pencil it in. I am doing monthly Q&A. I just forgot to put it on my calendar. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I just want to show you a sample draft. And then I'm going to show you how to do it. And then I'm going to show you how to change the angle. And when I'm talking about the angle of the sleeve, I'm talking about from the neckline edge to the wrist. You can change the angle of it this way. So I'm going to show you all about that um, in this tutorial. And what I want to do here is this, this, this looks funny because after I drew this in freehand, I realized my wrist edge was too short for the length of my sleeve so it looks like this funny little sleeve shape so I'm going to start fresh and I'm going to make it 
a longer sleeve so it looks like it actually makes sense. But before we start working, I just want to show you the things we're going to be looking at in this raglan sleeve. Let me just zoom in a little bit here so you can see it a little bit closer. Okay, so we're going to first draft or draw the guideline that's going to separate the raglan sleeve from the bodice. Then we're going to draw a little um, intersecting line here that's an equal distance from the base of the sleeve to the line. So from the line to here, this is equal with this. And that's how you, you sort of flip the um, this curve here. The base of the armhole gets transferred to here and it matches. So this equals this. Okay, so you do that and then you draft your sleeve from that. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Um, another thing that's interesting that I can show you here before we get going, wherever your original shoulder is, that's where the cap starts on, that's where the actual, you know, cap height is in relation, you know, to the sleeve. And then the bicep line is drawn from the base of the armhole here perpendicular or at a 90 degree angle to this line. So this is the bicep line. This is the cap height. All right. So those are the things we're going to be looking at as we draft it plus as we change the angle of it. So I'm going to put this one aside for now. And the first thing I want to talk about is I'm going to show you how to draft a, a one piece raglan sleeve that, um, that you can tape the front and back together and you can make it one a one piece sleeve. So we're going to draft draft the back of the sleeve on this one and the front of the sleeve on this one. Um, Isla, it's okay that you're late. We're just getting going. I'm showing how to draft a raglan sleeve. You really didn't miss anything except like the intro. So what I want to show you here is here's if you want to draft a raglan sleeve that you then tape them together and make it a one piece raglan sleeve. The one thing that's really important and this can cause fitting issues. So if you're working with a, a someone else's pattern, like not my pattern, because <laughs> of course I, I wouldn't do this, but if you're working with a raglan sleeve pattern and the, um, the sleeve is twisting on your arm. The reason why that might be happening is the angle of the shoulder in the front versus the angle of the shoulder in the back were not the same. So you can see here what I did was I put them together and I lined up the center front and back edges and I matched them up at the tip of the neckline here. So basically I, let's just show you what I did. I put this, you know, right sides together. I lined up the tip of the shoulder right here. And then I used a, um, a tracing wheel to trace the line of the back shoulder. And it ended up over here. So we are going to change the angle of the front to match. So I'm just going to highlight that so you can see. This is where my tracing wheel ended up. So basically what I did was I, I want to use this line to draft my, to draft my raglan. So the angle of it is the same as the front. Oops. I'm sorry. So the angle, oh God, I am just a mess today. Let me move this over here and make this small. Boop. Okay. So the angle of this from the neck to the tip of the shoulder is going to be the same from the neck to the tip of the shoulder there. So if you put your pattern pieces together, line up your center front and back edges, match up the tip of the neckline, just make sure your angles are the same. And this is only important if you're gonna then tape them together and make them a one piece sleeve. So I'll show you that at the end. But in any case, let's just start with this one. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is, you're gonna wanna decide, you know, a raglan sleeve comes from the neck the, the top of the sleeve is makes part of the neckline up here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to decide where along the neckline we want the sleeve to come up to on the side through the shoulder seam. So I'm going to say, let's put it right here. Okay, so that's where I'm going to put it. 
So the first step is I'm going to draw a line from here. I want to touch my armhole somewhere over there and just go across like this. Now, if you're working with a, a pattern that has a seam allowance, you might want to trim the seam allowance off so the seam allowance isn't getting in the way of drafting. So basically, I'm just going to do this. Like I want to touch, well, actually, I'm going to have to touch the sleeve there. So wherever the sleeve touches, so it's touching right here. So that's fine, okay? It depends on the shape of your armhole, and it also depends on where here you decide that you want the sleeve to extend up to the neckline. Once you have that line, you're going to draw a perpendicular line through the base of the armhole. And in this instance, the measurement from the base of my armhole to the line is 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to extend that 3 eighths of an inch past. So the length of this line matches the length of this line that intersects the first line I drew. Those are the guidelines you need to create the um, bodice edge plus we're going to copy and I'm just going to dash it in here. I think if you eyeball it, it's pretty close. So basically I'm going to start here and I'm just going to recreate the curve that I have here. So I'm taking this section right here and I'm recreating it here. Okay, so you just make a, lot, a curve that's similar to this one over here. Okay, and that's actually going to become the underarm seam or the underarm edge of my raglan sleeve. All right, so that's the first step. Then what you're going to do is you're going to line your ruler up with the shoulder. Now notice, this is why the angle of the shoulder is important because that's going to direct the um, this most simple version of the sleeve. I'm just going to essentially extend my sleeve, you know, as long as I want to have it. So I'm going to extend it that much. So that's the length of my sleeve from the top of the shoulder to the wrist edge. Then I'm going to draw a perpendicular line. So notice how I'm using my ruler here to line up. Whoops. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Sorry. Um, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do my wrist edge. Now my wrist edge is going to be half of the total amount I want for my wrist because it's, you know, it's flat in half. So let's say that's my wrist edge. Then what you do is you connect the bottom or the underarm seam to the base of the underarm seam you draw, draw, drew here. So this creates a very simple raglan sleeve. So the pattern for the sleeve does this. And it comes up here and it connects down here. Okay, so you can see we have half of a raglan sleeve. Now I'm going to get the front and I'm going to draft the other half. And I'm going to do it the exact same way. The cool thing is when you're working with the front and back, the only thing that has to be the same is the angle of the shoulder. So I've already fixed that so it's equal to, you know, so they match. And I'm going to pick an area along the front that I want to be included in my sleeve. Now, here's the cool thing. It doesn't have to be the same distance. So I don't have to, like, measure from the ed top of my sleeve to where I made the, you know, the back. I can make it as different as I want. So I'm basically going to decide on this one. Let's have it be... Um, Let's have it be down here. All right, so I just picked a spot. And again, I want to touch my armhole. Okay, so I touched my armhole. I'm going to measure this. So that's just going to be, that's only a quarter. So I'm going to draw my line one quarter, so it's the same. And then I'm going to copy, and we're going to say from here. Okay, so this shape is going to be over here too. Okay, so see how I mirror imaged the base of the armhole over here. All right, then we're going to design the sleeve. Now, 
When we design the sleeve, we have to make sure we make it the same length here. So this was eight and five eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I make this one eight and five eighths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and five eighths right there. And then my wrist edge measured two and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this two and a half inches like my other half of the sleeve. And then I'm gonna connect this here. All right, so again, we have, um, this is going to be our sleeve up here here, down here, and there. So now because we made sure our angles were the same, I can cut it out and I can tape it together to make a one piece sleeve. And I'm gonna show you that at the end because what I wanna show you now is if, okay, so this, okay, so this is gonna fit um, loose and boxy, meaning the cap height is short. So let me just draw a perpendicular line from here to here. That's my bicep line. I'll label that B for bicep. My cap height is short. It's flat. It's two, it's one in, we'll say one and seven eighths. This is this is my cap height, cap height right here. That's one and seven eighths. And this was three inches essentially. All right. So if you want a more fitted sleeve, um, two things are going to happen. You're going to have to have a seam down the sleeve if you make a significant um, change and you're going to have to angle the sleeve down. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I think I'll show you two different versions. We'll, sh we'll do it a little bit and then we'll do it a little bit more. Um, so the more we angle it, the more of a, the more we angle it, the more of a um, snug fit we're gonna get. And I'm gonna show you how it lengthens the cap and shortens the bicep line, okay? So what I'm gonna do is from this bicep line, I'm just gonna measure, let's say an inch down from here, I'm just gonna measure a half an inch, okay? So that's just a little guideline. And that guideline is to draw a more angled sleeve. And I'm just gonna do it right on the top of this. So basically I'm going to connect from the tip of the shoulder or at the, I'm sorry, from the tip of the neckline to my guideline. And I'm just gonna draw that. I'm just gonna skip over. And I'm gonna go down. Oh, probably should make it the same length too. So I'll make it eight and this one's, um, oh, I drew this one 10 and five eighths. I think I screwed up the length of my sleeves. We'll find out in a minute. Let's make this one 10 and five eighths as well, which is here. And then I'm going to do my perpendicular line that's going to be two and a half inches. And then I'm going to connect. Okay. So, oh, you know what? I screwed that up. I'm sorry. It's not supposed to go from here. That's why it was 10. It's supposed to go from here. Oops. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me fix that. I'm sorry. So it's gonna. that's why I have eight and a... Well, eight and eight and five eighths. Sorry, this is important. It needs to go from the tip of the shoulder here. This is a boo boo, boo boo, boo boo, boo boo boo. Okay, and the reason why that's important is if you're coming down at an angle, you don't want to make like a little peak here, like from the angle of the shoulder, and then have it come down. So what's going to happen is you might have to actually bow up or add a little bit of a curve to the sleeve. 
And on this example, it's really not going to be that much. I'm just going to do an ever so slightly, just to make it a smooth transition like that. So now that's really yucky and confusing. But this curved line right here, let me do it in a different color. I'm sorry. Screw that up. All right, let me just do it in this mint green. So the final answer is from the shoulder to here, you're just doing a slight angle. So that green line is the correct line. Okay, so Mary's asking, do you measure the undersleeve to make sure they match? That's a really good question, Mary. The undersleeve is always gonna match because it sews to itself. It doesn't sew to the top of the sleeve. This is the center of the sleeve here. Center of the sleeve, underarm. So we're gonna actually gonna tape the the original sleeve I did gets taped at the center. So whatever you do for an underarm seam, it matches because those sew together. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, we have to make sure this matches. But my guess is, um, my guess is it's gonna match because if we use the same angle here as we used here and here, this should match. If, if this line is the same as this line, and this line is the same as this line, the, if the wrist matches and this matches, then that should match. But let's test our theory here. So that's six and a half. And that is seven. So something got screwed up. So you know what I'm going to do? That's a really good point. I'm going to throw that one away. I'll leave that there. Let's redo this here. So we're going to say, thank you, Mary. We're going to say that our underarm seam measures six and a half. So when we go to do the next one, let's try this again. So we're going to lower, let's go down an inch and let's go um, half an inch down like that. We're going to connect this like this. And so this measures eight and five eighths. This measures, that also measures eight and five eighths. All right, I just want to make sure I didn't screw up there. Let me just try this again here. So this is going to measure from here, we're going to go down. eight and five eighths to here. Then we're going to do a, I'm just gonna put a dot at two and a half. That's two and a half distance. Let's just measure what we have here. So it's gotta be six and a half. So six and a half puts us, I think what I'm going to have to do is do six and a half puts us like this. So our sleeve is going to have to do that. Yeah, that's not going to work out. Hmm. Let me do it at a right angle. Let me just do it at a right angle. I'm just going to do it at a right angle and then I'm going to see what happens. I'm just going to do that for now. Um, and I'll see how we're going to fix that when we tape them together. And as a matter of fact, let's just try that now because now. All right, but wait a minute. All right, before I get way off, let me. Let me just do this. That's our bicep line. And what I want to show you here is the bicep line for the pink one is here. So see how I'm drawing it perpendicular to this line. So this is my bicep line and this is my bicep line. And you can see the bicep gets significantly skinnier than the original that's more straight, but the, and the cap gets shorter. So my bicep line to the cap here is from here to here, and my bicep line from 
I mean, the cap gets higher here to here, right? So see the difference is it's higher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those out and I'm going to see how they go together. So I must be doing something wrong and I don't see what it is. So let me just cut this out for now. All right, we're going to try the original one, and then we'll see. So I'm cutting out the original pink one, which probably I should have done that to begin with. I just didn't want to cut it out and then... All right, so here is the back of the sleeve, and here is the front. Let's cut this out and see. So in the process of doing this, I will figure out where I screwed up. So obviously, I did screw up somewhere. All right, let's see. All right, so these match perfectly. So there would be your one-piece sleeve. Okay, so if I, if I had cut them out. So that does not make sense to me. I don't understand why it's not working because let's look at this again. All right, we can see that the first sleeve I did matches. Okay, so you would tape that together and because the angle of the the shoulder was equal front and back, this will not twist or should not twist on your sleeve. Okay, so that's let me just tape it together. All right. Now, let me get a new one of these. Let's see where I'm going wrong. Because if everything is equal, it should be equal at the end too. All right, let me just draw this, this one. Okay. And let me draw, okay, so that's three-eighths to three-eighths. Okay, and then this is going to go here. So this is like a review, my underarm seam, okay, to there. Then I'm going to draw, let's draw it in. I don't know why I don't own any pencils. Oh, here's a pencil. Can I use this pencil? That's a pen. Whatever. I'm going to use a skinnier line. All right. So let's carefully make this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll make it eight inches exactly. All right. So from here to here is eight inches. And then perpendicular. Let's make this two and a half inches like I was. So this is two and a half inches. And then this. Oh, Mary. Okay, it, it does work. This, this angle is gonna change. I mean, um, this length is going to change, but the underarm, all right, the underarm seam, okay, so here, this is six and a quarter, right? And if we do a lower one, it's going to be, sh it's going to be a different length because it has to reach a different angle. But if we use the same angle on the back, it will match back. So it, it does work. The underarm seam curves you drew are different lengths front and back. Would that make a difference? No, because the underarm seams or your wings on any sleeve are not the same. So it's not wrong. Let me show you. So basically, I'm going to, let's do, let's do one that's really different. So let's do two inches 
and I'm going to, let's drop it a whole inch like this. It's exactly an inch right there. All right, so I'm going to drop this two inches down and I'm going to make it eight inches long. like this and I mean you can adjust you can adjust the length of the sleeve um, so remember we're gonna do eight inches here and I want to get right on that thing to here then we're gonna do two and a half inches here and then we're gonna connect it here and this is five inches this is now five inches. It's not um, six and three quarter inches. However, um, we're never gonna sew this angled sleeve to this angled sleeve. So when I go to make this angled sleeve on the front, it, it will match, I'm pretty sure. So let's test that right now. All right, so let's do like this. And then let's do like this. And then let's just make this, um, you know, an equal curve to here. All right. And then we're you remember we're using this angle here. Oops. Okay, so we're gonna do right, what did I do? I did eight inches from there to there. Yep. So we're gonna do eight inches. So that goes to actually ten inches. Whoops. And then two inches, two and a half inches, I'm sorry. And then this should be, what is this one? Six and a quarter. So that's almost six and a quarter. So it's slightly off, but I mean, it's close. All right. So you can see this is eight inches. This is two and a half. This is six and a quarter. Okay. And we already showed that that matched, right? So then... Pattern making for fashion design. Is that the um, Armstrong book, Karen? If it is, this is not in that. This is a different thing that I found that I thought was easier. Um, I drafted my raglan sleeve pattern using the Armstrong book, not this. But this this is an easy, I think, makes sense for people who are just who are not professional pattern drafters. So now I'm gonna, let's, let's test my theory. So we're gonna go two inches down to here. And then we're gonna go one inch down like this. So like right there. Then we're gonna do our eight inches, which is gonna put us right here. And then we're gonna do our two and a half inches like that. And now we're looking for a five inch, five inch. Hey, Sarah me. Let's say five inches and look at that five inches. So it's getting shorter, but it's, um, it's getting shorter, but it's getting shorter the same amount as you angle it down. Okay. Now, all of these things I'm doing, they're not proportional, so this, this is starting to look a little funny, but you can see that this matches that. And then the same thing happened with the bicep line, which is perpendicular to here. On this one, that's only two inches. And... My bicep line on this one is 
three inches. Oops, like this, three inches. So if I just do this, we'll have three inches. All right, so this one's three inches, that one's two inches. So it's getting more fitted. Oh, Mary B would like to know how to do a forward shoulder bone on a raglan. Okay, so the way you would do that is, hold on one second, let me just cut this apart. All right, so let's take these more angled, um, these more angled lines, or the more angled sleeve, and cut those apart and sew those together. I mean, I tape those together. So I'm gonna cut this apart here. Now, of course, you can change the um, the length of your sleeve, but also remember that I, what I have to do here, which I forgot in my excitement to make sure I was correct in my measurements is I want this to be more of a, a we want it we don't want it to be pointy like a pointy um, okay so see we're curving oops we're curving the top of the sleeve this is why we can't put it together so I'll show you what happens here and then let me just curve this one too Okay, so something like that. All right, so let me just show you here. So I'm going to cut this out on the curved line so it's a nice non-pointy shape. Let me see what I'm doing. Bigger here. Okay. And you can really make your raglan sleeve any angle. The lower you make it, the more fitted the sleeve is going to be and you have two choices here I'm just going to show you okay so I know this looks really kind of funky here but what you would end up having here is a front and back sleeve that you would tape together and you would have a dart. So you would smooth that out and it would become a dart. So that's, if you wanted it to be one piece, there would be a dart to close it through the shoulder up to the neckline. And give me my, well, I'll just use, I'm gonna put it, the paper under here. So line it up as much as you can for it being straight and then you can kind of um, play with the shape of the dart and of course you want to true that up but you want to make sure that this part of the dart matches this part of the dart right so if you have to make any fine-tuning adjustments to this length you would have to make sure this matches this Okay, and then you can see that this is a very, oops, I tape that. You can also see that this is a very straight design here. You know, here, this is very straight. So if you look at the bodice part, oh, if you look at the bodice that we have left, it's a pretty straight line here. So another thing you can do when you're drafting let me just do one more thing here. So does everybody understand that you can, if you angle it, you can either put a seam allowance here and have a seam going down the entire sleeve, or you can just sew the dart there. Um, and then if you have the one that's straight, it's just a straight sleeve like this. Okay. But I want to show you one other thing you can do. Let's say we're... We're doing this. I'm gonna do this as a guideline. Like let's say I want it to be like right here. So I'm gonna to touch my thing. 
But let's say I don't want this to be straight, okay? Because that's sort of a severe angle. I can, you know, I can bump it up and bring it down. You know what I mean? I can change the angle of this line if I want to. It does not have to be straight. All right, so that's the one thing you can do when you're playing with the design of your raglan. So that would be, and of course, I should have wore a raglan sleeve today so you could see what I'm doing on my body. That was not nice. Um, but you can change this line. It really doesn't matter. You can even, you know, you can have it dip down if you wanted to. Like whatever you want to do here for your line, you can change it, and then you can continue on with your draft. So whatever you end up with, wherever it touches, you just want to make sure you recreate the um the curve that's the only thing so the curve has to be this has to be flipped that's the only thing that has to happen but you can change this from a straight line to a curved line a little bit if you want to so mary wants to know if you angle the sleeve too much will it affect anything when you raise your arm so I think the lower you raise it, the less range of motion you'll have. It's a more fitted arm. Now, if you're working with a knit pattern, that doesn't really matter because you can, um, it'll stretch and it'll give. Okay, but if you're working with a woven pattern, you don't want to lower it too much because you'll be walking around like a with your arms down. You won't be able to lift them up as much because it'll all, the whole sleeve will be tighter. So, like, getting to my question... Mary B's question, um, and I think I have, I think I printed, I did print, um, all right, so here is a raglan, let me show you on what I printed. All right. All right. Give me one second. I'm going to print. Just give me one second. I'm just going to print um, my little raglan sleeve pattern pieces that are ready to go. YouTube. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Raglan half scale. Oh no. Do, 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 do. All right, let me just print this. I'm going to print this. I'm just going to show you how to do a forward ball of the shoulder because that's easy. All right, so when we think about a forward ball of the shoulder, um, I've done tutorials on how to fix that. And the whole thing with a, if, you, if the ball of your shoulder is forward, um, you know, closer to the front of you, what ends up happening is you need shorter distance here and you need longer distance in the back. So if you look at the way a raglan sleeve goes together, I'm just going to cut the sleeve out so I can, well, I'm going to cut it out loosely. So you can see this is a mini, this, these mini pieces are my actual raglan sleeve pattern that I shrunk to make minis. So you can see I played with the angle of this line. So see how that's not a straight line like it is, you know, here that's straighter. So just know you can play with the angle of your line here. So what I want to show you here is... Oh, and of course, this is backwards. All right, I'm, let me just trace it through. So this is the back neckline. Front. All right. All right, so here's the basic sleeve. Oops, basic sleeve. This is the back. And this is the front. So if I lay this right here... Okay, this gets sewn to here. So if you have a forward ball of your shoulder, you need to shorten 
And just keep in mind, your actual shoulder seam is up here somewhere, right? So the shoulder seam is somewhere up here. So what you'd want to do is you'd actually want to trim away, and you can trim it, let's say we take a half an inch off here, and we just, you know, trim it off and then make it even under here. Or you could do a quarter here and a quarter here, let's say, whatever. So we're going to trim it here. Let me just draw that in a different color. Get a nice little... So let's trim off. Let's pretend these are quarters. Okay, so I'm going to trim a quarter off here. And I'm going to trim a quarter off here. Okay, so I'm shortening the front, right? But then when I get to the back, I'm actually going to add that quarter in like this. So that's the new back. And then I can also add right here. I can also add the quarter here. So what that's going to do is it's going to give you the length you need to get up over your shoulder to the front ball of your shoulder. So you're plusing here, plus, plus, and you're giving that more length from, you know, your back to the shoulder so it can reach up. So this whole thing can reach right up to the shoulder seam. So, so you've added in a half an inch here and you've taken away a half an inch over here. Does that make sense, Mary B? Let me know if that makes sense to you, Mary, that we, um, you know, that we added here and took away here for a, this is for forward ball of shoulder. Okay, so that's how you would fix that. All right, so, I, I intended this to be a um, sort of a general understanding of how a basic raglan sleeve is drafted from a, a bodice that's designed for a set-in armhole. Um, I hope it was clear. And I mean, I just, I think the interesting thing is, here's the one I did when I was practicing before I came on camera here. And I mean, I think the, the most, you know, exciting thing is you can change the width of the sleeve by angling it down and then creating more of a style um, for, you know, if you want a form fitting curved um, shoulder, I think that that would help people. Like if you're like, if you put on a, a, a one piece raglan sleeve pattern and it just seems like the fabric just hangs on your arm and it's loose under here and it just makes you look all bulky. If you make a more contoured sleeve by lowering the angle of the sleeve, then that may be more attractive on you because you have less bulky fabric, you know, dro drooping under your arm and so on and so forth. So I just thought that was an interesting thing to share. Um, for today. I know it's not answering the subscriber's question exactly because she wanted me to show, she wanted me to show you how to take this and make it back into a standard sleeve. And like I said, I'm going to practice some more with it. And when I feel like I'm confident to show you how to do that, I will show that, but I couldn't get it together for this week. That's just my honest thing here. Oh, so, so live. Ceremy says, I just made the cropped cropped a jacket by the assembly line and it has one of the nicest fitting raglans I've made in a long time from home sewing patterns. Oh, is it a one piece raglan sleeve or a two piece raglan sleeve? Like, does it have a, a seam down the sleeve up, you know, here? Cause I think, I think having the seam before Sammy tells me, if it had a seam there, I think having a seam will make it more tailored and better fitting. Yeah. 
Yeah, a seam. So it does have a seam or a dart. Yeah, two-piece seam. All right, so I definitely think that taking taking a sleeve and doing this to it, where you actually put it back together, but because we angled it, we end up with a dart, or just leaving it as a open sleeve, I mean, um, a, a two-piece sleeve will fit much better and be more tailored looking. So that's that was kind of where I was going with that. And thank you, Sarami, for chiming in and telling everybody. So the assembly line has the cropped, is the name of the pattern cropped a jacket? Is that the name of it? Or is it just crop jacket? Crop jacked. A crop jacked. <laughs> I don't know if that's a typo, but I mean, if people want to go check out that pattern, I fully am happy for you to go do that. How about doing an upper round back adjustment? Raglans are great for baseball and getting the seams away from areas of, for high abrasion back and backpacks. Yep, that's true. That's a good, that's a good point, Sarami. Susie wants to know about doing an upper round back adjustment on a raglan sleeve pattern. Um, let me see if I can play with that and do it um, without a center back seam because doing it with a center back seam would be j the, just the same as doing it with a, um, okay. So like if this is my back and you had a center back seam, you could do the high round back the same way, but if it doesn't have a seam, I have to play with it. I can't, I can't Johnny on the spot one that one. I don't know. I haven't tried it. But basically, you could create, you know, a curved back the same way. Let me just cut this. So where's our new adjusted? Let's pretend we adjusted this for a forward shoulder. And then I would just slash and spread these open to make the back neckline go up. But like I said, I want to play with it in terms of making it a, um, in terms of doing it without a center back seam. I want to play with that first. So I will show you that soon. But basically, see, this is how you would just slash it and create the curve. <laughs> yep, the crop jacket. I knew. I knew what you meant. And baseball equals joke. Sorry. No, I know. I get it. I get it. Um, I will tell you, my friend Eric came over a while back and he was working on a raglan sleeve he was drafting and he was having trouble with the, um, the shoulder, the arm twisting. And I didn't think to check the angle of his shoulder seam. So I'm going to check with him on that and see if that fixes his, because he was making just a man raglan sleeve. So it was a loose, fitting raglan sleeve it had this you know this style sleeve oops sorry this style sleeve and it twisted on his arm and at the time I didn't remember the little ditty about making sure the angle of your front and back seams were equal um oh Sarami's asking anyone else with a rounded back find the that lowering the back neckline is helpful um, so there must be a reason why you're asking that. I, the, my concept is if you have a high round back, the neckline is already pulling lower because it's not reaching because the, the curve of your back is a longer measurement than if it were straight. So slashing it and spreading it like this would give you the, the, um, the extra length you need to get it up to the base of your neck where you wanted it. Oh, Sarami's saying it's because of his armhole points. Do you, oh. So, I was under the impression that your, uh, the angle of your shoulder seam so this angle, I don't know, this one right here. 
All right, so I was under the impression that the angle of your shoulder, so that would be the angle of, and this just happens to be the angle of my um, back shoulder is lower. This is the back, this is the front. They need to be the same. So if you draft one going off in this direction, and then you draft one going off in this direction, and then you go to put those together after you finish them, when you go to tape them together like this, that's going to cause the sleeve to... Um, that's how we're going to cause it to shift if you take this angle and this angle and tape them together. That's what I was talking about. Oh, um, all right. Mary says I have to do both because I have a forward shoulder bone. So Mary, you have to do a round back and a shoulder bone. Is that what you're saying? Oh, and me and Sarah Mary are talking about two different things. All right, that's okay. <laughs> oh, Isla's saying it must be why I'm more comfortable in a raglan. I've made two Tropicana shirts wardrobe by me and I find them super comfortable. Um, yay. Well, that's good. I mean, I do think, you know, raglan sleeve might not be the style line for everybody. Um, I, I think today I just wanted to show, um, why things could happen and how changing the angle of the draft makes it a more fitted tailored sleeve. So that was my goal today. I hope I did that. So anyway, I am going to head off now. I feel like I need to tug the shoulder forward after a while. Um, I can add to the back of the sleeve without taking from the front. You, absolutely. If the measurement from the seam behind you on the back bodice in, to the one in the front, if that's not big enough, it can pull. So um, try it and see. You can always take it back off if that doesn't work, Isla. Sammy says, I think that guy's armhole points were not straight across from one another. The twisted sleeve were on the same page about the neck. I mean, I'm interrupting and talking two different topics at once. That's okay, Sarami. I love it. Um, oh, Mary B. said this was a wonderful presentation. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I feel like I got a little off topic, but... Um, Basically, if you have any questions about raglan sleeve or if you try to draft your own raglan sleeve, please let me know, you know, and I'll help you. Um, anyway, I really appreciate it, but now I have to go off and get my granddaughter, so it's time for me to sign off, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate everybody coming. Um, I think you might have heard this week is shirt month, so... All my Fit Tip Tuesdays are going to be shirt related. And I do want to apologize, I guess. I got so excited to talk about cap height versus um, cap ease. I did that video this week. What I really should have done this week was I should have showed you how to figure out how much ease your sleeve cap has and if you need more or less ease before I did that video. But I'm going to round it up and I'm going to do how to tell how much ease you have um, today. I mean, um, this week coming up. So we're going to analyze the ease of a sleeve and how to decide if you need more or less ease. And then you can refer back to the video I did this week to adjust your sleeve. So that's what we're going to do this week on Fit Tip Tuesday. Friday, I'm starting an easy breezy summer version of my button down shirt. It's a cup sized pattern. Um, it looks like this for the moment, but remember, you guys, I'm rebranding, so this is say goodbye to the old cover. Get them while you can, because <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be changing my packaging and my covers and everything um, across the next year. But this is what it currently looks like. It comes in misses and women's sizes. This is the pattern I'll be working with to make an easy breezy summer cap sleeved button down shirt to go with my shorts that I finished. And they came out really cute. 
Oh, so so life says almost 40k subscribers. Yes, we're getting there. We are getting to be such a fun big group. I'm really excited. Um, let me just show you one other thing before I go. I'm gonna switch my table. I mean, this is going on my Instagram today, but I just wanted to show you. I wore those shorts, my new shorts, all day yesterday. And at the end of the day, I, oops, I just got to get to the right picture. Hold on. Oops. Hold on. Here we are. So here is my shorts. This is how they fit in the front. Front picture. Side picture. And back picture. So considering the fact that I almost killed these by cutting them out on the bias after I um, tested them on the straight of grain, I'm really happy with the fit of these. The thing that I do not like is, you can't really tell here, but because they're on the bias, it cups my belly like it's holding it like a bust cup. So I will never be wearing these shorts with a top that doesn't cover that. But other than that, I really like them. They're super comfortable. Um, and if you're wondering why I pink out my background, it's because my studio is still a flaming mess. So my granddaughter and I are going to be cleaning my studio when she comes. Last week, um, my husband, my husband's getting the granddaughter, so I don't have to rush off right now to get her. But, um, last week we made this, we ran around and picked dandelions in the, um, dandelions in my yard and we poked holes in this um cardboard uh cardboard butterfly we made so that's what we did last week um oh sammy wants to know do they feel funny when you're wearing them no they're super comfortable they do not pull they don't squeeze me it's just when i look at them it's like the fabric cups around my little belly that i'm trying to get rid of and I think I've lost some weight, so it's almost like my belly is the only thing left that I need to lose weight in the front. So it's this weird pouch that I have going on because um, I started back at the gym, so I've changed shape significantly. It's kind of funny how it, like I feel different because I'm using different muscles that I didn't use the whole time I was just hiking. So I have this weird tummy thing going on now, and it's not uncomfortable. It just, I think it just looks funny because it's... Oop, my belly, belly cupping. Yep, that can be a thing. That could be a thing. Um, oh, Mary wants me to make a shirt with color to go with my shorts. I will be revealing the fabric that I'm gonna use to make my Easy Breezy Summer button down shirt to go with these shorts on Friday. I might not have it in my hands, but I'm gonna order it. And there will be some sort of fabric that goes with this. <laughs> weird weird tummy club member oh my god that's so funny I know oh Susie says my granddaughter loves playing in my sewing room I found a dress form for her and she plays around and designs clothes I love that well Cameron will either be coloring in my studio or helping me organize because that's what I have to get done this week and with all the other things I have to do um, we're going to be working on my stuff this week. Last week we did the dandelion butterfly, but this week we have to do some cleaning. So that's what's, that's what's happening when I get off with you, with you when my granddaughter gets here. Um, but we will have a yummy snack and we will, whatever. Well, I can have, speaking of which, I have this one. Maybe I could have her she can play with this one. This is my, my half scale from, um, I got this many years ago from French European dress forms. Um, I really love it. So maybe she, that can be her, that can be for her to play with while I'm working on stuff maybe. Um, but anyway, all right, I have, to, I have to go now because I have to get myself together before she busts through the door. So thank you guys for joining me. Um, I will see you Friday for part one of the Easy Breezy Summer Button Button Up. And um, thank you for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Um, have a lovely rest of your day. All right, I'm going. Bye-bye.